Welcome to our lecture online. In this problem, we're going to take the same problems we did in the previous video, but instead of trying to find the angle, which we now know what it is, we're going to find the rate of change of the angle with respect to time at this particular moment in time, and we're supposed to do it by using the dot product. So let's start with the dot product. So what we can do here is we can say that a dot b is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle between them. And we know that this is also equal to AX BX plus AY BY. There's a B here. All right. And so that means that we can write the cosine of the angle theta as being equal to AX BX plus AY BY divided by the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of both sides with respect to time. But before we do that, we have to realize that a sub x is equal to 0, so this goes to 0, which means when we take the derivative with respect to time of both sides, we take the ddt on the left side of the cosine of theta, and that equals the ddt of the right side, which is equal to ay times by <laughs> times by divided by the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B. Now, AY is a constant, and so is BY. So both things in the numerator here are constants. But in the denominator, A is a constant, but B is not. B will change over time because B is equal to the square root of B sub X squared plus B sub Y squared. Now, B sub Y is constant, but B sub X is not. That changes. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace the magnitude of b times what the magnitude of b is equal to. So this can be written as the ddt, well, yeah, let me go ahead. So the ddt of the left side, which is the cosine of theta, is equal to the ddt of ay, by, which are both constants. In the denominator, a, which is a constant, but b is going to be the square root of b sub x squared plus 100 squared like this, and that is a variable. Now we can go ahead and take the derivative of both sides. On the left side, the derivative of cosine is going to be the negative sine of theta times d theta dt, and that is what we're looking for. Is equal on the right side, it will be the denominator times the derivative of the numerator, but the numerator is a constant, so it's basically 0 minus the numerator, which is ay by times the derivative of the denominator. So here we have a constant, which is a, times the derivative of this, which is 1 half, times b sub x squared plus 100 squared to the minus 1 half power, times the derivative of what's inside, which is 2 times b sub x, times the derivative of b sub x, which is db sub x dt, which is essentially the velocity of the particle. And all that divided by the denominator squared, which is a squared times b sub x squared plus 100 squared to the 1 half power squared, which is to the first power right there. Now notice that this can go to the denominator. That becomes this to the 3 halves power. The 1 half will cancel out the 2. This negative will cancel out this negative. Now I just realized the sine of theta needs to go over here. So I'm going to move the sine of theta down here in the denominator. And now I'm ready to simplify this. d theta dt, that's what I'm looking for, is equal to, and here I have an a sub y, b sub y, a. Notice that this has a negative exponent, goes to the denominator. I have a b sub x, and I have a change in the b of x dt, that's the velocity, so let's go ahead and put the velocity down, divided by a squared times the quantity b sub x squared plus 100 squared. Now that's going to be to the 3 halves power, because this is to the first power, and this comes down here, 3 halves power, times the sine of the angle, and the angle was 40.37 degrees. All right. Now plug in all the values and let's see what we get. d theta dt is equal to a sub y is 100, b sub y is 100, the magnitude of a is 100, 
b sub x is 85, v is 20, all divided by 100 squared, and this quantity right here, that would be 85 squared plus 100 squared to the 3 halves power times the sine of 40.37 degrees. Notice that this 100, this 100 cancels out with that 100 squared. Now let's go ahead and calculate the rate of change of our angle. So 85 squared plus 100 squared, raise that to the 1.5 power, multiply that times 40.37, take the sine of that, equals, take the inverse of that, now multiply that times 100, times 85, and times 20, and I get 0 0.116. Radiance per second. Now, if we want to convert that to degrees per second, we multiply the times 180 degrees per radian, per pi radian, I should say. So multiply that times 180, and divide by pi, and I get 6.65 degrees per second. And that is the rate of change of that angle with respect to time at that very moment when the angle is 40.37 degrees. And we figured it out by using the concept of the dot product. And that is how it's done. And that is correct. <laughs> That's a wrap.